Hi, my name is Jamie Blueball. I'm running for state representative for District 101. We're here tonight for a forum brought to you by the Goddard Chamber of Commerce, talking about our views and how we can gain the support of the constituents and how we're going to represent them. We're going to start with getting some introductions from the candidates here. Jamie Blueball, I live here in Goddard. Um, been out here about 10 years, lived in Sedgwick County for about 16. Shortly after graduating high school, I grew up in um, rural Harper County in a small town of Danville. I don't know if you know anybody's familiar with that, about 50 people. So I know what a, you know, it's like to live in a small town and in, in a big town. So I've done both. Um, married to my wife, Elizabeth. Um, we have four children, Talia, Conley, Bentley, and Jake. Um, we are a combined household. I have my in-laws that live with me too. Um, like my wife and I have been out door knocking, we tell people we kind of know the needs of, you know, anybody from the age of two to 72. So um, having that experience living with my in-laws have taught me a lot too of, of, you know, the process of retirement and I've helped my dad fill out social security paperwork and, you know, uh, you know insurance benefits and stuff. So having that being close to a family, you know, teaches us a lot of things. Um, I've got a business degree from uh, associate degree from Baker University and a business degree from Fringe University. Um, I went through school as working full-time at Cessna shortly after high school. Um, also juggling that, did real estate part-time. Um, started it when I was 19 years old and I've been in the real estate business 15 years. Um, shortly after 2003, I got laid off from Cessna. Um, been doing real estate full-time since then. Um, being in real estate and I own and manage rental properties, we see a need for people concerned about property taxes is a big thing that I am focused on. I want to ensure that, uh, I, I don't want to say that people's property taxes are going down anytime soon with, with the state budgeting you know, as hard as it is, but I want to ensure that they're not going up. And I think if your property taxes go up anymore, that would really hurt getting people to the economy, you know, into the local area. Um, also, we see, you know, I see a big need. Either people downsize and just don't want to make the payment or on fixed incomes and, and they don't want to uh, pay that high or they can't pay the high taxes on their property. Um, another thing would be the valuation system. I think everybody knows when they get the values, they, they kind of grumble about it. You know, if your house hadn't been updated or, you know, maybe we should go off more of a sales or, you know, a more fair way to do the appraisals. And, and that's just stuff I see firsthand um, selling real estate. Um, I think that's, you know, like I said, being involved in real estate, uh, I'm very aggressive and I feel like with my business experience, I can do a good job for the people and uh, represent them well. Uh, next we'll move to Jamie. Uh, how is your past personal and business experience helpful in decision making for the Kansas House of Representatives? I have to negotiate on a daily basis. Um, and I think that's what our legislator needs to do, is to negotiate with each other and find a way that it's a win-win for everybody. I feel like uh, there might have been some shutdowns in our system and things taking extra long and the, the session getting extended. And I feel, um, you know, we need to leave personal beliefs out of it and make sure we're doing the best for our state to, to grow and give independent freedoms to individuals and small towns to grow as well. Um, like I said, being a real estate with property taxes, I think that's taught me a lot. Um, being self-guided and self-motivated um, gives me the drive to help everybody else out and, and do what's best for the state. Um, like I said, I've self, self-driven, I've put myself through school, I started a family at a young age, and uh, I had a successful business and work together with my family now. And as you know, sometimes families don't get along, so um, we can get along real well as a family being around each other all the time with my brother and his wife and my wife, uh, and uh, we're able to function as a business and a family as well, and we still uh, love each other at the end of the day, so that's real important. Um, I think that it, um, making decisions to a business approach, having um, strong moral and family values as well will help me make a business decision um, and, not, uh, and making sure we're looking out for the best interest of people that, uh, that need the extra assistance by the state. Um, I'm very involved and dedicated to my com community. Um, we, I do a lot of stuff for the Goddard area. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very visible around here. Um, I like to help out and when people need help, I like to pitch in and offer my services to people. Um, I think that's about it. I won't uh, keep rambling on. I'm, I, I'm very to the point kind of person, so you ask me a question, I try not to expand on it and give you a direct answer. Uh, well, um, I think uh, these guys probably have a little more experience on the budget cuts and know the programs you know, better than I do, but uh, I will look at them with a business approach and make sure there's not waste in a program. Make sure that um, you know what programs, I guess it depends on the allocation of funding too, to make sure that there's enough money for the state and then you, you find out what resources and, and what uh, programs are out there that need to be cut or minimized. Um, 
Uh, but also when you look at budget cuts, budget agency cuts, what are you doing then? You're cutting on, uh, employment. So we've got to be careful with um, on budget cuts, making sure we're not getting rid of local jobs as well. Um, by doing that, I think combining agencies, like what Dan was saying, is, is a step in the right direction and there's not the overlapping um, involved. Also, if we need to outsource it to privatized companies, and by outsourcing I say to local privatized, privatized companies. So make sure, you know, anytime, you know, I think we say anything outsourcing, you don't want to think outside the country or anything like that but definitely keep it local to um, privatize jobs and make sure that private companies are running it and also not affecting jobs as well but you know any kind of cuts that I would be looking at I would would make with a business and a moral approach and make sure it's not a service of you know people in need that that, that they absolutely need that I would you know hate to see any of those cuts being made um, I, I guess it goes into importance or um, the need of the the people that need that or the people in need um, but again, I, I think the privatizing and outsourcing to uh, local people and, and uh, a bid process where it's a more competitive price and, and not the over overlapping and government waste and spending. I think one thing would be, um, and I think our city officials here in Goddard would know more about this when you're applying for state funded grants, permission, um, if you're either fixing the waterways, sewage systems, I think that that could probably be um, expediated. I think uh, Mayor Gregory would probably agree with that. I think by um, getting involved in the state level and letting cities grow faster and not having to wait around for, this, for the state to, to do that would be one step. Um, tax relief for new businesses um, I think would be a, a good step. If you're not making money here now, what's the, you know, what's a, what's the um, hurt of giving some tax relief for those first few years while they're here and then once they've established then it's going to be more money for the local economy and the state. Um, also, I, you know, I living in Goddard, I've known, you know, living on 183rd and Maple, uh, the, the cities and the counties fight, you know, that's not my road, I'm not going to shovel the snow or, you know, I'm not going to put a stoplight there and, there, you know, I think that uh, we can get involved to make sure that everybody grows for the same purpose and that know that the flow of traffic and uh, the services to the constituents here will be met and I think uh, getting involved state level wise to help um, cities, counties, townships um, expedite that process would help out a lot as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, that is going to conclude our forum tonight. This is the first candidate forum um, speaking to people. We've done a lot of door knocking, a lot of face to face, but this is the first audience that we've had. I was on the radio this morning. Um, I felt like this is a great way for people to get to know your personality and how you're going to represent them in the state. It's very enjoyable, you know. I think even some more crowd interaction and questions is, is very good. And if you don't know the answer to things, you just tell them you'll have to do research. And I think speaking honestly and briefly, people respect that and want to hear your views and, you know, right off the cuff and nothing premeditated and performed and wrote by somebody else. They want to hear directly from the candidates and their thoughts. I've got the energy and the business background minded to uh, go at it full speed ahead and get in front of the people and tell them that I can represent them better and do a good job representing the state. Those of you who voted in the Republican primary, this is the main election for several local elections. Um, with all the candidates running, there's not a lot of Democrats running and the primary election is ideally the general election for local elections. So please remember to vote on August 7th.